Hey, it's Kurt Thompson here, TrumpetSizzle.com. In this video, we're going to be restringing uh, French horn, the French horn rotors. I just got this French horn in, uh, mainly because I wanted to do some demonstrations with it for some of the stuff that I do with my courses. And um, like I got the sizzle weight here. That's um, going to be awesome. If you guys have never tried a really dense tungsten weight on your French horn mouthpiece, you are really in for a tremendous delight and surprise. It adds weight to the mouthpiece, but it sends a lot of your tone and vibrations through the horn. And I'm going to be, um, I've already uh, manu manufactured these, got in Texas, made in America. And uh, t tungsten is expensive. This is heavy. But anyway, I'm not talking about that today, but that's the reason I got the horn is to do some demonstrations. Also demonstrations in the upper register, a la Dennis Brain, to let you know that my course, which most of you French horn players seem to think is only for trumpet players, really is not. It's for anybody that puts their lips into any kind of brass instrument, including French horn. So that said, we're going to get into restringing the French horn. Now, um, way back in my other life, when I was in my 20s, um, I got a little short of cash. And what I ended up doing was um, picking up, oh, this is before eBay and Amazon and all that. And that's back when you would buy and sell the newspapers and things like that. So what I ended up doing, at the end of the school year, I'd have students that had siblings uh, or students that uh, decided to get rid of their student instrument and um, or it was broken or they had a sister that played flute and the flute wasn't doing good. What I would do is just buy these for real cheap because they were, they were kind of like almost parts. And I uh, started fooling around. And I got some books. This is one of them, instrument repair book. And then I there was no videos to watch. I just started messing around. And what I ended up doing was um, repairing instruments to get them back in pretty decent working condition. And then I would sell them in the fall. And lo and behold, that's how I was able to pay off my student loans and um, eventually buy my first house back in my 20s. So you know, I've gotten out of that because I've gotten into, you know, uh, other more sophisticated things that make less money, like teaching. But out of necessity, I I wanted to get this horning gear for me to do some of this stuff. Um, even I'm going to be playing some of the Dennis Brain stuff, which is very tough. And I can't, it's just a cheap uh, single horn, but I can do it on that. But I can't have the rotor screwing up. And when I got this one off of eBay, the guy said it was in um, good playing condition. It was just all kind of beat to hell. You can see it's got dents. He actually ended up lying because when I got it, the the string on the first rotor was broke. I mean, it was um, it was ripped. It, it wasn't together. And the first rotor didn't work. And so I started fooling around with it. And I thought, okay, I can't go off my memory from years ago. So I got up my... Trust a repair book, and we today, you and I together, are going to be restringing a rotor. And uh, I've already oiled the rotors. I, this is pretty good oil, too, in case you don't know about it. Maybe I'll put a link in the description. Um, Hetman's pretty good. And I have, um, this is, uh, I dumped this down the main, the head screw. When you unscrew that, I'll dump that. And when you take off the ca rotor caps on the other side, I'll, I'll lubricate it with this. But... In the short squeeze, when I don't have a lot of time, I use this light rotor oil and the needle, and I can just um, unscrew the cap and just apply a little bit, just kind of get things moving around. Um, this is a good way to do it quickly if you don't want to take everything apart, which I think most of you probably don't want to take everything apart. Uh, so I went to my local yokel friendly music store here in Central Texas, and lo and behold, they happen to have this. Now, it's kind of pricey. Uh, but they got the Yamaha uh, rotor valve string. This can be used not only for French horn, but I guess bass trombone, um, F attachment bone, um, -de -de -de, a rotary trumpet, anything with a rotor. I mean, that requires a string if it doesn't have a mechanical linkage. Uh, this was six bucks though. I felt it was a little pricey, but I had to do it. So we're going to go ahead and start, and I will include pictures uh, from my manual book here, some diagrams so that you can follow along. Now you got to keep in mind, I haven't done this for years. I've really kind of forgot. So I'll be stopping and starting this um, tutorial. But for those of you who don't want to take your horn, drop it off, and $100 later, um, you know, have your rotor restrung or all three, whatever they charge, but I know it's at least 100 bucks 
Uh, seems like anytime you drop your, your horn off, you're looking at 100 bucks. If you'd like to keep that Ben Franklin in your pocket to um, whatever, buy a Starbucks gift card or who knows, maybe buy one of my courses. There you go. See, <laughs> you save yourself some money. You were able to do something else with it besides give it to the instrument repair person. So we're going to go in and um, go through my manual. Now I have a, the manual over here. If you look, it says valve restringing. Let's see if we can scoop, scoot a little closer. There you go. Okay, it says materials needed. A braided fish line. I guess you could use fish line, but um, I think I've tried that in the past and it doesn't always work. It's a little bit on the slippery side. Um, so, but I guess if you can find the braided fish line and not just regular fish line, maybe that will do, maybe that's what this really is. But, um, if you don't want to hunt around and spend an hour wherever at Hobby Lobby trying to f find that or at, um, Academy or Big Fives, you might just want to go to your music store and just get what I got. Um, a knife and a screwdriver, small blade. I recommend these guys. Have you ever seen these sets here? You can get these real cheap at Hobby Lobby, even Walmart. Um, they're like craft screwdrivers. They're very, very small. They got little small blades on them. I don't know if you can see that, but they're, they're good for stuff like this. So anyway, okay. So let me back off out of that. Uh, well, let's look at the procedure though. It says down here at the procedure, I might as well just show you it. So I'll just go ahead and read. And this is what you're going to see me do. Uh, he says, um, Loosen both the top arm screw and the key lever screw and remove the broken string. So I've actually already done that. And what he's talking about is, if I can get over here. Hold on a second, my camera's kind of messing up. He wants you to loosen um, this screw here. Right there. Just loosen it, not take it off. So I don't know if you can see, but this one... It's, it's already, you can see it moves around. It's already pretty loose. This was the top head screw. You leave this one alone. Uh, just don't mess around with that. And then, uh, is it this one here that, um, hold on. Let's see. Yeah. And then this one he wanted you to loosen. I've already loosened it. See, I don't know if you can see that it's moving. That's loose. And then he talks about threading it. So what I've actually done is I've taken, I don't know, six, seven inches of this and I cut it off. Let's see. What do we got here? Yeah, give or take, probably about six inches. And what I did was I tied at one end, I tied this knot here, see? And then what I did is I just threaded through here the, the hole on the arm, you can see that. I put it through there and then when I came up here, I just cinched it so that it can't go through. Obviously, if it went through, then you're not going to be in business, right? So you get tie a little knot there and you're going to cinch it tight like that just so it's not going to pull through. So I've already gone through some of the first steps that he talks about here. Let's get back to here. And so he talks about that. He says, cut a piece of this line, seven, eight inches. Uh, he talks about tie a double knot like I already did. Um, he said, feed the string through the hole with a knot on the opposite side. So I've already, you've seen, I've already done that. Now let's go to number three. After the string has been fed through the hole, give it a firm tug to set the knot and all while you saw me do that and to make certain it doesn't pull through, okay? Then run the string behind the stop screw, stop, stop arm head. And here he gives kind of a nice little diagram so you can check this out. Stop arm head. So I'm, I think he's talking about this. Now the big screw, the stop, the big screw that you see behind on the rotor assembly itself, let me make sure that you're actually seeing this, is this screw here. So he said you're going to run the string around the top, uh, arm head which is this one see uh, stop arm head and screw and you're going to twist a loop in the string and slip it over the top of the top arm screw which is this smaller one so let's get the Frenchman over here just to let you know what was coming ahead for you so what he's talking about is we're going to be wrapping the string around uh, we're going to be going around this is the top uh, what did he call it? The stop, the stop arm screw. We're actually going to be going around here and twisting it around this guy here. Making sure you're able to see me. That's the top arm screw, I believe. Is that what he calls it? The stop arm screw. Yeah. 
we're going to be doing that and then we're going to be kind of um, looping our way back around here so let's just let, let me see if I can go ahead and get that going the way he wants um, I haven't done this for a long time so let me back off here a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on so make sure make sure I got everything in the picture because I'm trying to do the video here as well as um, be able to see things myself so okay I'm gonna pause the video and I'm, what I'm going to go ahead and do is loop that string around and then point out what I did so we can just save a little bit of data on my uh, phone here so be right back okay we're back in business so can you see what I've done I've taken this and um, let me see if I can get back out of there. Come through on this side of the stop head, screw like that, and we're getting down in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to come back around it like this, just like so, and come in and under uh, the screw that they're talking about here. Let me make sure I got the right vernacular here. This is the stop arm screw that we're coming around, just like so. See, and we're going to work our way this way. So now I'll pause it. So you can hopefully we make sure in the video you're able to see that. Yeah, see, you saw what I did there. So now we're going to freeze that. Okay, just to be more clear on what's going on, making sure that you're able to see this. Um, I actually turned the French horn around to be exactly like the diaphragm uh, diagram. So um, I actually had the the string on top. So this string actually was on top and it needs to be under. Can you see how it's under like that? So we're just going to go ahead and do it like they're recommending. So, uh, you know, just in case uh, the other way I was going to do is wrong. So this is just like the diagram. Look, here's the diagram over here. Let's see if you can see that. Here's the diagram. So now I turn the horn around to be just like the diagram. So we make this loop. Okay. So hold on. Okay, so we got that tied in. It's coming around here. The loop is going to come under here. And let me give it a little cinched up, just like that. Hopefully you saw that. Uh, like that. There. So, there we go. I don't know if we're supposed to tighten that up real tight right now, but I'm just giving a little snug snug. It's about as I don't know if we're really supposed to tighten it up this much probably not <laughs> uh, but we can looks like we can loosen it up a little bit okay so we got that much done now let me go ahead and pause and see what's coming up next but anyway this was kind of critical if you saw this um, the string look is definitely under this this loop is under when, he, when you're coming out here it's actually under the, the the string that goes around the loop so I hope you saw that Okay, so there's some notes that they gave here. Might as well just show them to you. It says here, um, note the direction of the string and the correct overlapping. So I guess what I just did and what you just saw was important. The string has to be lapped um, under, like you see here. See, see the string, notice it. Notice the string as it comes out from the stop arm screw is actually under that little curly cue, not over. So they're making a deal about that being important. Okay, it says, now look under these notes here. It says, note the direction of the string and the correct overlapping. So I just talked about that. Do not tighten the screw at this time. Okay, normally I would have tightened it down a little bit. <laughs> I've forgotten how to do this. It says, next, continue circling the stop arm head with the string and feed it through the hole in the end of the key lever. So let me show you the diagram again. There's the diagram. So to me, it looks like what we're going to probably do is see right, we're right here. Uh, now, I don't know for sure, but I guess we're going to take this and we're going to go around this way and come through. Now, now there's a hole here by the, or are we going to go through the hole? I believe there is a hole. So we're going to come right around here and go through the hole. So we'll, I believe that's what's coming up next. Uh, maybe... Yeah, I believe that's what's coming up. You can see here in the other diagram. See? So we've, um, here's where we started. There's where we were. 
Now what we're doing, we're going to come around the top head screw again, come around this way, and you'll notice, of course, there's a hole on the lever there. You're going to go through that hole. That's, what, I guess, what that is right there. You're going to push the string through that hole, come up, and do a little loop-de-loo -loo around here through that screw. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so now I hope that you can see this. I've got the string loop now around this and I'm about ready to go through the hole. And are we going through the hole there, right? Come on, baby. Yeah, I didn't want to go. Did that make it through? Yes. I'm going through the hole there. I'm putting my finger there just so that doesn't slip off the stop head screw. Okay, so now you can see I got it through the hole. Now he says, let's see what we're doing here. Okay, we, we, we've done that. It says loop the string around the key lever screw in a clockwise direction. Okay, so this is the key lever screw obviously. And he said clockwise, which means um, we're gonna go this direction. So this is clockwise. Seems like we might need to unscrew that just a little bit. What do you think? Uh, I think so. So let me get my friendly screwdriver out. We're just gonna unscrew that just a little bit. Okay, easy for me to do. Jeez, get in there, guy. Oh, we good enough. Yeah, okay, that's clockwise. You know, clockwise is this way, right? Clockwise. And now what does it say to do? Leave. Okay, pull it taut and tighten the screw. Leave about an inch and a half of string for adjusting purposes and cut off the rest. Well, that's probably about an inch and a half already. Maybe, maybe two inches, but he said tighten this. He said make it tight, so let's make it tight. Okay, that's pretty tight. Let me, in fact, I'm gonna unloosen this just, I'm gonna loosen it and just get it under, make sure I get it under there good. Now it's all tight, I'm gonna tighten it down. He said tighten here. Notice we didn't tighten this one yet, right? That's not tight. Okay, I got it pretty snug there so I'll let you um, so this is what we got so far can you see that's what we did so far easy peasy right of course we're not done but just for you to if you wanted to kind of catch up back on the diaphragm when I say diaphragm I'm thinking of diaphragmatic breathing I'll just let you take a look one more time at this um, the not 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 the words just you can uh, see the, the how we started it That's where we're looping it around the top head screw right there if you can see And then remember this diagram almost said diaphragm again up here And you've seen me do all this You know and I just brought it uh, what with this last step you just saw me come around here come through this the hole and then clockwise around the screw like that and then tighten this down this one's not tight he said tighten this down leave about an inch and a half two inches which is that was already just um, the existing string so I didn't have to cut anything off so that's where we're at now now we're on this side so let's flip over here take a look at this diagram so let's talk about what he says here because it looks like we're at the end of this tutorial on French horn valve rotor restringing. So this is coming along. Okay, so if you read here along with me, check and adjust the height of the valve key 
As the stop arm screw is held against the number two valve adjustment cork, move the valve key to the proper height. Hold the key in the position and tighten the stop arm screw. So remember, um, we already tightened this one. We did not tighten this one. And the, the valve key is just, um, I call that the paddle, you know, like your rotor paddles, but I guess you could call it the valve key. So uh, he's saying check and adjust the height of the valve key as a stop arm screw is held against number two stop arm screw. Okay. Oh, I see to make sure it's right there. So you're just, uh, that's the start position. That's where your horn normally rests. Anyway, move the valve key to the proper height, hold the key in this position and tighten the stop arm screw. So let's just see what happens there. So, hey, it's, it's um, already working, but if we look at it, I don't know, what do you think? I think obviously um, that's down too far. It should be, well, this one's, this one is whack too. This is, this is probably closer or may, maybe it does need to be out a little bit more. Maybe, maybe not quite that much, maybe but maybe at least somewhere right around there. So yeah, we do have a just have to adjust that. And he's saying, now how does he saying to do that? He's saying to bring this back to where it's resting. And okay, what is he saying here? Hold on a second. Valve key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm just going to pull pull on the paddle here. I'm going to pull it out. I've already pulled a little bit, you can see. Uh, I'm going to pull it out a little bit more. Just slightly. I guess, I think probably right about there is not bad. Can we go a little bit more? Yeah. That's not horrible. Right there. Now let's make sure this is back to here where it needs to be. It looks like it is. Now this is not yet tightened. This is not tightened. If I wanted this to be out a little bit more, I suppose I could loosen this up just a fraction. Let's just see if it doesn't go all to hell. If I want to loosen this up just a little bit, I'm on the I'm on the, the lever now, and just loosen it just a fraction. If I want to bring it out. Yes, there we go. It's coming out a little bit more. I got a big hand, so I, I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit more. Well, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, but it's definitely um, back quite a bit. Where are we? I got to back that far. Now, do I got to back too far? Probably. <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and tighten it right now and see what happens. I'm going to tighten this guy back down. Now, they said to tighten this when you find this, the, the sweet spot. So we're talking about the, um, the stop arm screw here. This is a stop arm head, the stop arm screw. So this has not been tightened. We're going to tighten it right now. And then this guy here, pretty tight. I actually, I kind of like that. I kind of like it where it's at, just because of my fingers. See? Wow. Now you guys didn't already see me do this, but I actually had, sorry about that. I actually had this all out. Um, I had this off here. And I had the complete, um, um, this, at least the first head of the, the rotor popped out and, uh, I was, um, just drowning it in oil. I didn't really use this one today because I, uh, I wasn't doing the quick version. So, um, you can see, look at this old, old junker horn. Look at that. 
Now, if I really wanted to stop that clicking, I could replace this. It looks like there's plastic in there. I don't know if you can see. If I really wanted to stop that clicking, I could probably invest in cork. So it wouldn't click like that, but look at that. Isn't that nice? Brand new string, and I guess these other strings here came with the horn. Um, I don't know how, this horn has to be 50, 80 years old, so. Um, it, and it's, I don't believe it's a pro horn, but um, I'm gonna get it going and do some pro stuff with it. But now look at that, you got a rotor that works. And this one, that one's not working, but these two are. So this, we'll just put a, put this mouthpiece in, and this is probably not even the mouthpiece I'm gonna end up using. Um, with the weight, but let's just um, play, just at least play the the first rotor. <laughs> fantastic folks except you do hear the clicking you know what I'm probably not gonna I don't see myself doing this I'm probably not gonna take all the corks off I mean I'm not overhauling this instrument believe me it needs a lot of overhauling I don't know if you saw the bell looks like somebody just look at that I don't know if you can see that but this horn has seen better days. So, um, <laughs> this horn has seen better days and it would require a lot of work, especially look at that guy. Yeah, it's, it's I'm not overhauling this horn. I just wanna, uh, I'm, now I might go take it to the, to the instrument guy locally and at least maybe have him take out some of this. That wouldn't be a big deal. Just so it looks nicer when I'm playing in some of the videos, but for right now, the sound is not bad. Not bad for a cheap single horn I'm gonna be doing some things on this but the main purpose of this of course was this rotor I'm actually proud of myself um, I haven't messed around doing any kind of instrument repair serious like this in quite some time and uh, this one here look at this one here this one's actually frozen now so I got to mess around I'm probably just gonna restring all three of these and I'm not gonna do that on the video because that would take forever and since you've already seen this um, you can do all yours. So let's recap real quick And then we're done So just to recap you needed um, the string And one of these handy-dandy screwdrivers um, You could probably get these at Walmart or if not definitely Hobby Lobby Michaels someplace like that has it maybe yeah and um, You saw what we did so we loosen the uh, stop arm screw uh, here and uh, we threaded everything. So I'm not going to go through everything again, but this is your diagram, diaphragm, diagram. And look at after this entire tutorial, I can't say diagram. <laughs> I keep saying diaphragm. So anyway, there's uh, figure 412. There's the uh, drawing up here. See if I can get that closer. So you can just, maybe you'll just want to freeze this while you're doing it on your own. I don't know. What do you think about this tutorial? Did you guys like it? I bet some of you old pros are just laughing at it because you've done this a million times and it, um, you maybe didn't um, really care about it. But for the rest of you, 
the rest of you that have never done this before or mom and dad that have always just taken their horn and sent, sent it off to the band shop and paid $150 to have this done, you don't really need to do that anymore. Um, if you rewind this video and just go slow, pause it slow, and you have the string and the tools, I don't see why you can't do it yourself and, and put that $100 towards getting better on the horn. Hey, wonderful segue. The money that you saved, not given to the repair shop, which would be at least $100 for this, and you wouldn't have your horn. You're probably there, you're going to have to leave it there for a couple of weeks, at least a week. Well, take that money if you like this video. First off, leave a great comment. Maybe give it a thumbs up, hopefully. Um, but really, if you saved a lot of money and you want to get better at your horn, that's what I do full time. I don't fix horns anymore full time. I teach you how to get better at this instrument. And that means whether you're a beginner and an intermediate or you're up there trying to play all the dentist brain stuff, I can help you because what you need there, now I, I'm not going to um, show you all the ins and outs of the, the style stuff, but what I'm going to be able to show you is the embouchure building and the chops in the air that you need up there to play with more ease and um, a lot better endurance and a bigger sound that's what that's what i'm i'm doing that's my job so anyway love to hear from you um, i'll have some links in the description below but my website you can always go to is trumpet sizzle.com i'm kurt thompson let me see if i can get my mug in the shot here yeah it was me kurt thompson hopefully you can see me i'm the guy behind the voice behind this french horn restringing tutorial and i hope that you got something out of it I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.